Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair. And having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here, at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pump, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, Whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command Tell that its sculptor well those passions red which yet survive, Stamped on these lifeless things, The hand that mocked them and the heart that fed, and on the pedestal these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. Thou still unravished bride of quietness, a foster child of silence and slow time, sylvan historian, who canst thus express a flowery tale more sweetly than our rhyme. What leaf-fringed legend haunts about thy shape of deities or mortals or both, in Tempe or the dales of Arcady? What men or gods are these? What maidens loth? What mad pursuit? What struggle to escape? What pipes and timbrels? What wild ecstasy? Heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. Therefore ye soft pipes play on, not to the sensual ear, but more endeared pipe to the spirit ditties of no tone. Fair youth beneath the trees, 
Thou canst not leave thy song, nor ever can those trees be bare. Bold lover, never, never canst thou kiss the winning near the goal, yet do not grieve. She cannot fade, though thou hast not thy bliss. Forever wilt thou love, and she be fair. Ah, oh, happy, happy boughs, that cannot shed your leaves, nor ever bid the spring do. And happy melodist, unwearied, forever piping songs, forever new. More happy love, more happy, happy love, forever warm and still to be enjoyed, forever panting and forever young. Oh, breathing human passion far above, that leaves a heart high sorrowful and cried, burning forehead and a parching tongue. Who are these coming to the sacrifice? To what green altar, O oh, mysterious priest, leadest thou that heifer, lowing the skies and all her silken flanks with garlands dressed? What little town by river or seashore or mountain built? A peaceful citadel is emptied of this folk, this pious moor, and little town thy streets forever more will silent be, and not a soul to tell why thou art desolate can our return. O attic shape, fair attitude, with breed of marble men and maidens overwrought, with forest branches and the trodden weed. Thou silent form dost tease us out of thought as doth eternity. Cold pastoral. When old age shall this generation waste, thou shalt remain in midst of other woe than ours, a friend to man to whom thou sayest. Beauty is truth. Truth beauty. That is all ye know on earth, and all ye need to know. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes, and what wings dare he aspire, what the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain? In what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp dare its deadly terrors clasp? When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright, in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? When I consider how my light is spent, ere half my days in this dark world and wide, and that one talent, which is death to hide, lodged with me useless, though my soul more bent to serve therewith my Maker, and present my true account, 
lest he returning chide. Doth God exact day labor like denied, I fondly ask? But patience, to prevent that murmur, soon replies. God doth not need either man's work or his own gifts. Who best bear his mild yoke, they serve him best. His state is kingly, thousands at his bidding, speed and post or land and ocean without rest. They also serve, who only stand and wait. What the heart of the young man said to the psalmist. Tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream. For the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not what they seem. Life is real, life is earnest, and the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art, to dust returnest, was not spoken of the soul. Not enjoyment and not sorrow is our destined end or way, but to act, that each tomorrow find us farther than today. Art is long, and time is fleeting, and our hearts, though stout and brave, still, like muffled drums, are beating funeral marches to the grave. In the world's broad field of battle, in the bivouac of life, be not like dumb, driven cattle, be a hero in the strife. Trust no future, however present. Let the dead past bury its dead. Act, act in the living present. Heart within and God o'erhead. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime. And departing, leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another sailing o'er life's solemn main, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother, seeing shall take heart again. Let us then be up and doing, with a heart for any fate, still achieving, still pursuing, learn to labor and to wait. I wandered, lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not be but gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude, and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Death, be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. 
For those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow die not. Poor death, nor yet canst thou kill me. From rest and sleep, which but thy picture be, much pleasure. Then from thee much more must flow. And soonest our best men with thee do go. Rest of their bones, and soul's delivery. Thou art slave to fate, chance, kings, and desperate men. And dust with poison, war, and sickness dwell. And poppy or charms can make us sleep as well and better than thy stroke. Why swell'st thou then? One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, And summer's elise hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, And often is his gold complexion dimmed, And every fair from fair sometime declines, By chance, or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, Nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, Nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, When in eternal lines to time thou growest, So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, So long lives this, and this gives life to thee.